Dr. Bujiramora is a final year breast cancer and melanoma clinical and research fellow at the Jurvinsky Cancer Center. She completed her medical school training at the University of Alberta, followed by residency training in internal medicine and medical oncology at McMaster University. She is currently completing her fellowship in breast cancer and melanoma, as well as her master's of health sciences education. Her research interests include learner and patient education, as well as the integration of technology in education. Welcome, Dr. Ruchi Aurora. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm Ruchi Aurora, uh, as was mentioned. So today I'm gonna be talking to you about treatment updates in uh, melanoma. So just an outline for what we're gonna talk about. Um, so we'll talk about adjuvant therapy. Um, so the history of it, the mechanisms behind the treatments, um, our current practices and some recent updates. Um, we'll then talk about metastatic melanoma, treatment of that, and then some exciting future directions. Um, so what's called neoadjuvant treatment, and we'll answer some of uh, the questions we got from the audience as well. So to start, um, so adjuvant treatment is basically treatment that's given after the melanoma has been removed by the surgeon. And the purpose of it is to prevent the melanoma from coming back in the future. So typically this is done for melanomas that are very high risk, and that usually means that they're very deep um, or lymph node uh, spread has taken place. And here's just a picture of um, a pathology slide and there's a lymph node that has some melanoma in it. So this is a typical patient who we might offer adjuvant or preventative treatment to. So um, quite a long time ago, the only thing we really had in terms of options for adjuvant treatment um, was something called interferon alpha. And that was developed in the late 80s. It had a very low cure rate of only two to 3%, but unfortunately was very toxic. Um, only about 75% of patients were able to complete the full year of treatment. And at least half of them needed a dose reduction. Um, and a quarter of them just outright declined or refused any therapy. So, um, I'm sure many of you have heard of the advances that have taken place with immunotherapy. Now, immunotherapy has actually been around, in a sense, for longer than um, you may think. So it was really in 1976 when we discovered that there was some sort of relationship between melanoma and the immune system, um, where the immune system is involved in getting rid of melanoma. Um, as I mentioned, in the 90s, interferon was formally approved. And then in, um, in 2011 is when um, uh, ipilimumab, which is a type of immunotherapy that we'll talk about, um, that was formally approved for metastatic melanoma initially, and then eventually as preventative or adjuvant treatment. And shortly after that, we had nivolumab and pembrolizumab, which are also forms of immunotherapy that were approved as well. So what exactly is immunotherapy? Um, so I know this diagram looks quite complicated, but I'll try to make it simple. So basically, um, our immune system is designed to try to get rid of any foreign materials or things that are not supposed to be there. And cancer is certainly something that's not supposed to be there. The problem is that tumor cells can be very sneaky and they can have different receptors on them, like this one called PD-1, um, or sorry, PD-L1, that can actually shake hands with our immune system to trick the immune system into thinking that they're, they're supposed to be there, that they're normal parts of our body. And that actually prevents the immune system from fighting off the cancer. So the purpose of immunotherapy is actually to block the interaction between the tumor and the immune system such that the immune system can actually recognize that the tumor or the cancer is not supposed to be there and the immune system can wake up and kill off the cancer. And so there are a couple of different um, places where this can take place. Um, so there's uh, this interaction here, PD-1. Um, so a blocker of that, an antibody that blocks that, we call that nivolumab, pembrolizumab is the other one. Um, maybe some of you are even on these treatments. And then um, there's another interaction here, so a CTLA-4 blocker called ipilimumab. So ipilimumab, as I mentioned, it, was, it first came out in, um, or was approved in 2011 for metastatic melanoma, and then years later in 2016, was studied in the preventative setting. So a large study of over 900 patients looked at stage three melanoma patients, 
and they gave them one year of adjuvant or preventative ipilimumab um, compared to placebo. Um, and overall, they found that there was a 10% benefit after five years. So that means that after five years, 10 out of 100 more patients survived if they got the ipilimumab compared to if they got placebo. And not to get too technical here, but this is just a graph that um, we tend to show in clinical trials um, or in, in papers, and this is showing exactly that. So at five years, you can see that 65% um, of uh, patients are alive who got the ipilimumab compared to 54% um, who received placebo. So after ipilimumab was studied um, and nivolumab was being discovered, we then studied nivolumab for the same purpose, preventative therapy. Um, so these patients got either nivolumab or ipilimumab. Um, again, these were stage three patients. Um, and for this study, we have updated results out to four years. So compared to ipilimumab, nivolumab actually gave an extra 11% survival benefit. So 11 out of 100 more patients who got nivolumab survived compared to ipilimumab after four years. And again, here's just a picture or a graph that shows um, those findings right over here. So at 48 months, you have 52% of the nivolumab patients who are alive and melanoma free um, compared to 41% of patients um, who got ipilimumab. Sorry, I should have mentioned that, alive and melanoma free. So pembrolizumab, as I mentioned, is a cousin of nivolumab. Um, so they work very, very similarly. And when pembrolizumab was studied, it was actually compared to placebo. So this is a nice study because it actually gives us a, a true benefit of pembrolizumab compared to getting no preventative or adjuvant treatment whatsoever. So we have three year survival results um, for this study. And compared to placebo, there was a 20% three year benefit. So after three years, 20% or 20 out of 100 more patients are alive and melanoma free compared to if they got no preventative treatment. And so that is basically what is uh, shown right here. You can see what we call a separation of the curves. So there's a big difference in how many patients are alive at three years. Now, some of you may have heard about a different kind of treatment called the BRAF inhibitors. So before I get into some details around that, um, what exactly is BRAF? So BRAF is a gene in our cells and it controls a lot of cell growth. Now, the problem is that BRAF can sometimes become mutated and that can lead to cell growth that is basically out of control, too much cell growth. And when that happens, um, that can actually underlie a lot of melanomas. So um, we have developed medications that can actually block BRAF and in essence, basically turn off those cancer cells uh, to treat that melanoma. So we have a medication called uh, dibrafenib. Um, now there's another one that we tend to use in combination with dibrafenib called trametinib. Um, not to get too complicated, but it basically, trametinib also works on the same pathway um, to try to block um, these effects of the, of the BRAF gene. So um, although BRAF inhibitors were also first studied in the metastatic setting, um, they also were studied um, years later in the preventative or the adjuvant setting. And that was in 2017. So a big study of almost 900 patients who all had these high-risk melanomas stage three, and they had either dibrafenib and trametinib, um, or they had a placebo. So after five years, the benefit was 16% in terms of preventing the melanoma from coming back. Um, and uh, overall survival benefit of 9%. And so we can see this is the, um, the benefit after uh, five years. So 52% of patients are alive and melanoma free if they got the dibrafenib and trametinib compared to 36% if they did not get any adjuvant treatment or, or they got the placebo in this case. So um, to make sense of all of this and to organize it, Basically, what this means is that when we have someone who has stage three melanoma, if they don't have the BRAF mutation, we can offer them um, one of the immunotherapies, nivolumab or pembrolizumab, because remember, those are nivolumab was compared to ipilimumab and it was better. Um, if the patient has the BRAF mutation, we actually have a choice. We can offer them nivolumab or pembrolizumab, the immunotherapy, 
but there's also the option of a year of dabrafenib and trametinib. And which one we choose to choose uh, ends up depending on a lot of nuances of the patient, patient's preferences, medical conditions, and things like that. So switching gears now to talk about metastatic melanoma. Now, back in 2010, um, so you remember from the, the video at the start of this um, presentation, um, the gentleman said, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been alive. And he's not being dramatic by saying that. 10 years ago, um, all these people in the red are people who died after just three years. And the green are the ones who were alive. So not many patients survived if they had metastatic melanoma. Fast forward to 2020, and more than half of these patients are the green. So quite a few more patients are living after three years versus those um, 10 years ago. So what can we use to treat metastatic melanoma? So one option is to use immunotherapy, what we call single agent. So just use one immunotherapy alone. And our go-to would be either nivolumab or pembrolizumab. Remember, those are cousins of each other. Nivolumab is usually given either every two weeks or, or at a different dose every four weeks, um, or we can use pembrolizumab given um, intravenously every three weeks. Now the response rate, so the chances that the melanoma will actually shrink down happens in about 35 to 40% of patients, um, but the survival, so after one year, 70% of patients are still alive. And that is compared to 58% of patients who um, are alive after one year of ipilimumab and 42% who would be alive after one year um, if they got what's called decarbazine, which is a very old, archaic um, type of chemotherapy that was the only thing we really had to use, treat metastatic melanoma in the past. Um, and there is about a 15% rate of um, side effects. We won't get into side effects today, though. Um, so there was also a study uh, a few years ago now that looked at combination immunotherapy. So what if we combined nivolumab and ipilimumab? And in this study, they combined the two and gave them every three weeks for four treatments in total, and then just continued with the nivolumab alone every four weeks for one year. And what was found is that overall, after five years, more than half of the patients were still alive. And that was compared to about a quarter of the patients still being alive if they got just the ipilimumab alone. Now, the important caveat to this study is that there was a 55 to 60% risk of side effects. So certainly, um, if anyone out there is, is on this combination treatment right now, you'll know that your doctors are following you very closely um, to try to watch and make sure you don't run into any of these side effects. Sorry, that's my dog. So in terms of the um, BRAF and MEK inhibitors, um, so we can also use these in the metastatic setting. Um, so, and that's actually where they were first used. So again, dibrafenib and trametinib, they're the most common ones, but we do have other ones as well. Um, you may have heard of vemurafenib um, and, bini, and um, uh, uh, binimetinib as well. So um, the most updated results actually just came out hot off the press about uh, a year ago now in August of 2019. So after five years, the number of patients who were still on the same BRAF and MEK inhibitors did not need to change treatment um, because they were responding really well was almost 20%. And after five years, more than a third of patients were still alive. Now, what was really important about that article was that it, what they found was that the biggest benefit was actually in patients who had what's called a normal LDH, which is just a blood test. Um, if they had less than three spots of cancer, um, so for example, in the liver and in the lungs, um, you know, less than three sites, and in those patients who were selected very carefully, after five years, more than half of them were still alive. Um, so certainly some very promising results coming out with these BRAF inhibitors. So um, certainly uh, this looks a little bit complicated, but I, I'd like to think that this is actually very optimistic that there's a lot of treatment options now. So for somebody who has a BRAF mutation, we have a lot of options. We can start with the BRAF inhibitors. Um, and if at some point they stop working or patients cannot tolerate them, we have the option of immunotherapy. And when we go through immunotherapy, we can give either combination or we can give single agent. If we give single agent, we can have ipilimumab in our back pocket if the single agent doesn't work. If um, patients want to, for whatever reason, start with um, immunotherapy up front, again, we have options of using single agent or combination. And then we have those BRAF inhibitors in our back pocket 
um, for future use. So lots and lots of um, options here, and, and it's certainly very promising and exciting. And if someone does not have a BRAF inhibitor, we still have um, the opportunity to give either the combination immunotherapy or a single agent immunotherapy. Um, and if we give the single agent, we can give ipilimumab um, uh, later on if the single agent stops working. So um, I'll just say a brief word about neoadjuvant immunotherapy. So what that is, so neoadjuvant basically means before surgery. So adjuvant is after surgery, neoadjuvant before surgery. So um, there was a study of patients who had stage three melanoma that was actually able to be surgically removed. But instead of going straight to surgery, instead these patients actually got some treatment first. They got two cycles of ipilimumab and nivolumab, half of them. The other half got just nivolumab alone. And what was found was that in 75% of patients, they had, at the time of surgery, either none or almost no melanoma at all um, remaining. And about half of those patients had no melanoma at all remaining. And that's compared to only 21% of patients who had the nivolumab alone. And out of everybody in this study, only one patient actually had the melanoma recur. So that's very, very exciting that so many patients had a good response to the immunotherapy. And um, now in terms of um, the benefits of neoadjuvant therapy, so there's a few of them. One is that you can actually literally see the tumor shrinking because it's not been removed yet. Um, it can make surgery easier to conduct. Um, patients who have little to no uh, melanoma left behind, we know that they actually do better. And that's something called tumor biology. And it gives us the opportunity to change treatment um, if, for example, there is lots of melanoma left behind. Um, and on the converse, if there's no melanoma left behind, we can actually consider possibly surveillance alone. Um, so not more treatment. And that's actually being studied right now in a new trial called the Prado trial, where they're taking patients who have stage three melanoma and they're being um, given two cycles of ipilimumab and nivolumab. And if they have no melanoma remaining at the time of surgery, they're going to just be watched, no further treatment. If they do have melanoma remaining at the time of surgery, they're going to undergo further surgery to remove all the melanoma, and then they'll continue on with one full year of nivolumab. And so, um, of course, this is an ongoing trial. We don't have any results yet, but certainly a very exciting future prospect. And just a couple of other um, future prospects. So neoadjuvant BRAF inhibitors for those patients who have the mutation. Um, one study found that the rate of pathologic complete response, which means no melanoma left behind at the time of surgery, is almost 50%. Um, and the benefit is that it actually makes surgery a lot easier as well. And there's um, some data coming down the pipes. Um, this is still quite quite a bit in a ways away, um, but possibly combining the BRAF inhibitors and immunotherapy um, prior to surgery and then after surgery, maybe picking one and just giving that. So um, that's it in terms of what I have for treatment. Um, there was a great question that came in about, is there a relationship between breast cancer and melanoma or are they independent? Um, so a common risk factor for both, and actually most cancers, is age. Increasing age usually means um, higher risk. Uh, but there are a few rare hereditary conditions as well. Um, there's something called BRCA2, which can be associated with melanoma, breast cancer, and a few other cancers. Um, something called familial malignant melanoma, where there's a very specific mutation. Again, also quite rare. Um, and another rare mutation in a gene called ARF. And there's probably other ones that we just don't currently know about, we haven't discovered um, quite yet. So I hope um, that was helpful and that um, you feel very hopeful and inspired now that there's um, so many great uh, treatment options for melanoma.